We are now joined by Mr. Wolfgang Münchau. He's associate editor and columnist at the Financial Times and speaker at this year's St. Gallen Symposium. Mr. Münchau, thank you for granting us some of your time. At this year's St. Gallen Symposium, two key figures of the Euro crisis, Mr. Trichet and Mr. Papandreou, are present. How would you describe their roles in the development of the Euro crisis? Well, I think both have actually been very, have been played very important roles in, uh, in preventing and, and a bigger disaster that, would, that might easily have occurred in the last two and a half years. Jean-Claude Trichet was president when the crisis occurred, uh, not just the Euro crisis, when the global financial crisis happened. And you know, the central bank did at the time make a very important decision, which is to, to provide the markets with sufficient liquidity. And you know, that helped us, that saved us enormously. And the liquidity policy of the ECB have been very supportive of the system. So, you know, I'm not, you know, I would criticize certain other decisions the ECB took, but you know, the ECB has played an important role in, as a stabilizer in the crisis. Uh, it could have gone really badly. With Papandreou, the same thing. Greece could have easily already be out of the eurozone had it not been for uh, for his, you know, his diplomatic skills in getting uh, the European Council to to uh, get together and agree a, a, Greek, a Greek program, and then a, another Greek program. So that was very much his, you know, his, his, uh, you know, his, um, you know, merit. And he, you know, and, and that sort of, they're both big figures of the Eurozone crisis. Austerity is mostly seen as the most suitable way to escape the debt crisis. To what extent do you agree with this approach? I don't agree at all. It's not mostly seen. It's seen by the establishment as the most suitable way. But I think if you make a, a poll among international economists, you will probably find that that is not agreed at all. That it's a European consensus view that whatever the problem is, austerity is the answer. Um, and it's, it's, it seems logical if, you're, if, you, if you do not understand the dynamics of economics. If you think this is like a bookkeeping exercise, you know, if, if you think of the economy as a very large company, then yes, you would probably do austerity in the way that companies save, save on their bills when they are in trouble. But economic decisions have dynamic effects. And if you deleverage, if a private sector of an economy deleverages, and if a public sector of an economy deleverages at the same time, that isn't going to work. Because somebody else, you know, when somebody saves less, somebody else will save more. An economy is a balanced Ladies system. And gentlemen, it doesn't, you cannot externalize. You cannot easily externalize your, um, your, uh, your decisions. So what normally happens in such cases is that economies fall into a very deep slump, which is not forecast, which is not in any of the models. And that is what happened in Greece, which is now in year five of a recession. And it's now happening in Spain. Spain is in, a, in the beginning of a very serious downturn. Uh, unemployment is at 25%. And if this continues, unemployment will reach 30 to 40% in Spain. A, a, a situation that is not sustainable politically. So that would be the, the main, the main. You know, this is a, something that will that will lead to an explosion. And the question is, how you know, how do we, you know, how can that be avoided? Your co-founder and president of Eurointelligence ASBL, an independent service for economic commentary and analysis of the Euro area. What motivated you to create such a media channel? The reason we, we created Eurointelligence, which is a non-profit company. The reason we, we, we uh, established the, Euro, the Eurozone is the, is the second largest economic zone in the world and it doesn't have a newspaper, it doesn't have a television station, it doesn't have any media. Everybody is to themselves, everyone, the French talk about France. If you get the European, uh, European statistic, like European confidence indicator or European growth statistic, if you look at a French newspaper, it would say what it says on France. If you look at the f Italian newspaper, it will only point out the Italian elements of that. There is nobody who takes ownership of the Eurozone. And we wanted to create a media space for the Eurozone. Now, we, we are aware that commercially it isn't possible to launch a Eurozone newspaper. That might have been 100 years ago if we had a Eurozone then, but, but this is no longer the age of the newspaper. So we, we decided to do this over the internet, to create, to, to, to brief people on what's happening in other countries, to create a joint Eurozone uh, a space. What are the three main risks that European leaders of tomorrow are facing and how should they address them? Well, the main risks we're facing, I'm not sure I, I have a convenient list of three for you, but the main risk we're facing is macroeconomic stability, uh, of which financial instability is one element but not the only element. That element is something that happened, that happened for a while. Uh, we have seen global imbalances all through the last decade, but it became a perceived risk with the crisis, um, but it's not really that new. Uh, that, that problem hasn't been solved at all. 
and we need we need uh, you know that needs to be that, that is the, the priority for for the for the next for the coming decade it is to to ensure that we uh, that we get on top of global global macroeconomic risk uh, in europe specifically we have to find in that 10 year period a, a framework for the eurozone uh, and that framework has to work and it has to be seen to be working it has to be democratic and it has to be efficient and it cannot simply rest on the current institutions on you know statements that everything will be fine when it isn't uh, so it, there, there needs to be some serious you know some serious you know institution building going on and i don't want to go into which institutions we need there, there will be a democratic and long process you know but but there needs to be some minimum a minimum set of institutions and, and systems in place to ensure that the eurozone can work and that it can withstand shocks these are the two things that i would would think that the that we need to address the third challenge if i have to put one is that invariably the financial sector will have to become smaller uh, as part of an overall overall system stabilization uh, uh, but there are problems when you have a smaller financial sector because it, it means there won't be that many loans uh, credits so how to manage how do you manage without an abundance of finance uh, that is a question that 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 entrepreneurs and business leaders of tomorrow will have to answer so it'll be a harder environment in which to operate than the, than the last 20 years when credit was simply available when you asked for it. Mr. Muncher, thank you very much for your time and enjoy your stay at the St. Gallen Symposium. Thank you very much. You're welcome.